Hello students, today we are going to start our next topic that is introduction to insurance part 2. In this insurance, we need to understand the rule, rights and responsibilities of insurer and insured. So firstly, we need to discuss about the rights and responsibilities of insurer. So the insurer has a right to collect the premium from the insured. The person who is insured has to pay that premium. A right to specify the rules and conditions that govern the promise made under the policy. And the last is the responsibility to pay for the loss if any loss incurred by the insured. So these are the rights and responsibilities of insurer. And the second is the rights and responsibilities of the insured, the person who buy the insurance that he is the an obligation to pay the premium. He has a right to collect premium payment from the insurer if any covered loss occurs and obligation to comply with the terms and conditions prescribed by the insurer. So he has to fulfill all these conditions. He is, it is his rights and liability responsibilities. So apart from these rights and responsibilities, the basically the function of insurance is here. It helps in a capital formation because a person is having an insurance so after an accumulation of a long term fund so that capital can be formed it provides a certainty that means then when we buy insurance then we are little bit certain that if we are not there or we will not be there then we have some certainty regarding finance it provides protection it provides protection against the future possible losses it helps prevention of losses and it shares risk when the risk is there so we share that risk with the other ones now the characteristic of insurance is that risk sharing and risk transfer so in insurance we always share the risk and we always transfer that risk it is a cooperative device cooperative device means that all people cooperatively accumulate the funds and share their risk so that is why this is a cooperative device it calculates risk in advance so whenever the risk is chances of risk is there so we need to calculate the risk in advance payment of claim at the occurrence of contingency so whenever any contingency occurs that payment should be made at the occurrence of that contingencies and the amount of payment whatever the payment of uh, claim is there the company has to pay that claim and the most important characteristic is that large number of insured persons the number of persons insured is in very large number and insurance must not be confused with gambling and charity because the insurance is a little bit another thing which is a contract of indemnity whereas we cannot make it a compare with charity and gambling the basic selling features of an IRDA is basically IRDA is an agency or the or regulatory body which helps in promoting, regulating and ensuring orderly growth of insurance and reinsurance. So in that case, it helps in issuing a certificate of registration of an applicant as well as modify, renew, withdrawal and suspend cancellation of such organizations. It helps in protecting the interests of policyholders in case of nomination, policyholders, settlement of claims, insurable interests, surrender value, and etc. It also specifies the requested qualifications, practical trainings, code of conduct, and intermediaries, pro insurance brokers, and agents. It specifies the code of conduct for surveyors and law officers. It helps in promotion of efficiency in conduct of insurance business. To promote and regulate professional organizations connected with insurance and reinsurance business across India, helps in relieving fees and commission and other charges for carrying out the purpose of this bank act. It also helps in keeping a tape and exercise control and regulating investments of funds by the insurance companies. It also regulates in maintenance of margin and solvency of buyers. It also helps in solving the disputes between insurance and intermediaries of the insurance. Also specifying the percentage of premium income of the insurer to finance a scheme for promoting and regulating the financial organizations. So here it ends. So thank you students.